Sunset Overdrive is the last game that I can say that I felt an overwhelming sense of hype for. Let's go back to 2014 real quick. The Xbox One had just launched less than a year prior, and the few next-gen games that were available were beginning to trickle out with the likes of Titanfall and Destiny. I picked up an Xbox One as soon as they launched the model that didn't have a Kinect, and eagerly awaited a game that had really piqued my interest back at the previous E3. I really dug the trailer as it hit at the time when the super gritty war shooter was starting to become very played out. The trailer starts that way for sure, but soon turns into this cartoony, campy romp, with it being revealed that Insomniac was behind the development of the game, who had been known for the Ratchet and Clank and Resistance series. The trailer was refreshing at the time, and I was 100% in on the game. It almost seemed like this spiritual sequel to one of my all-time favorite games, which I will talk about a bit later. I was so into the game that a month before the game came out, I kept a Sunset Overdrive countdown page open on my computer right up until release. This was the last time that I ever got truly excited for a game to the point where I was poring over anything Sunset Overdrive related, keeping my ear out for any news, and watching all of the somewhat cringy videos that came out from the Sunset Overdrive account on YouTube. And let's prescribe you with a full dose of good old Sunset Set overdrive. I watched Scrubs, so pretty much a doctor. It was the kind of childlike excitement where time slowed down the week before release, and I felt like every day was a long, dragging affair, which double sucked because I worked in retail. Still, the hype was very much alive, and October 28th could not come any sooner. I even watched the streams of people who got the game early. So I bought my copy of Sunset Overdrive at release and binged through the game all the way to the end in a matter of about a week. After finishing the game, though, I found that it didn't really live up to my excitement. Granted, at some point in your life, you'll realize that you shouldn't let yourself get too hyped on any game, as it can very much ruin your enjoyment of said game. Still, something about Sunset Overdrive was just rubbing me the wrong way, and I didn't know what it was. The game was billed as a quirky comedy game mixed with Insomniac's excellent gameplay design. I was picturing a mature Ratchet and Clank, and that is sort of what you get, but only sort of. Now let's fast forward to this past Friday when I saw Sunset Overdrive pop up on the Steam store, and I don't think I've ever clicked Add to Cart faster in my life. Why? Well, I knew that the PC version would give me a better experience with an uncapped frame rate, and also, I knew I wanted to give sort of a mini review of this game. Sunset Overdrive is an open-world platforming third-person shooter that takes place in the city of Sunset City, where the apocalypse has basically happened. An energy drink called Overcharge is released that has a slight side effect of turning drinkers into super mutants who want to tear people limb from limb. You play as the guy or girl who is working as a janitor at the Overcharge launch event, so your first mission is escaping ground zero of the incident. A few weeks later, you meet up with the survivors of the incident, only to realize that Overcharge's manufacturer, Fizco, has bought off the government and has quarantined the entire city to protect their stock prices. Yeah, the political opinions of this game are pretty on the nose. Sunset Overdrive lets you create a custom character with few basic options like face, body structure, hair, and clothes. To my knowledge, this is one of the first games that allows players to use any hairstyle or clothing for either gender. I could be wrong, but this was the first game that I noticed that I had that option. From there, you're taught the basics of the gameplay. You get a wheel of quirky weapons, very much akin to Ratchet and Clank, and you jump, grind, and bounce your way through Sunset City fighting very factions that pop up. There's the aforementioned Super Mutants, the OD, the Wasteland-inspired Scabs, and the Fizgo Robot Security Forces. Basically, this game feels like a weird love child of Ratchet & Clank, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and that certain game, again, I will talk about later. This game has some of the best gameplay that I have ever experienced. Insomniac has designed a city that perfectly lends itself to the insane traversal mechanics present in this game. It almost feels like the entire city is a giant bouncy castle with grind rails and guns everywhere. Even on the Xbox One, where it's locked to 30 FPS, I had so much fun just zipping around the city, kicking ass, and collecting stuff to upgrade my character. The PC version has an uncapped frame rate, so, as you can imagine, playing this at 144 FPS is like playing the game for the first time again. I'm finding myself once again having a blast in this game, but its faults are certainly being reinforced as well. Sunset Overdrive is the story of two different games, in my opinion. On one hand, we have a finely tuned gameplay experience that is just a pure joy to play. On the other hand, we have a game that contains probably some of Insomniac's worst writing to date. Remember when I mentioned that this game was built as a quirky comedy game? That is certainly what Sunset Overdrive goes for, but it falls flat on its face at pretty much every turn. I did not laugh once playing this game. This game is not funny, but I couldn't put a concept to that feeling. Why wasn't it funny? What was it doing wrong? Then I remembered a review from Zero Punctuation that I saw for the game shortly after launch. The main character of Sunset Overdrive seems like what a room full of men in their 30s and 40s think the kids are like these days. Yes, that's it exactly. Don't believe me? Well, I call it the awesome apocalypse! 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 Doesn't that make you want to rip your ears off? Ah! This happens a lot, by the way. Hey, Walter, what did you do for a living? You know, before all this. Why does that matter? Okay, so you were a professional meme person. Got it. He didn't have an icon dealy thing on his head, so am I supposed to chase him? Yes, you should follow him. Okay, scary, helpful voice man. Are you like a superhero or something? What? 
It's just the way you move, the, the things you do. You're like a tornado of death. Yeah, aren't tornadoes the tornadoes of death? Cute and explodey. Like chocolate and peanut butter. Where are they all coming from? Emergency flush system offline until you figure out where those OD are coming from. Hey, automated intercom lady. I can do with a little less sarcasm, okay? You can dish it out, but you can't take it, huh? Of course they have a panic room. I had an entire panic apartment. It just looked like my normal apartment, but with boarded up windows and me inside, panicking. That's from the first six hours of the game, by the way. Ah! Then we have the game's soundtrack, which is okay at best, quite frankly. While games with this sort of style tend to have a nice mix of different types of music, this game's OST sort of devolves into a bunch of power chords that make each song very difficult to tell apart, with the exception of this awful riff. Now I understand why I kind of let this game go after playing it. I personally very much value the narrative of the games that I play, and this game is just painful in that regard, and the lack of exciting OST isn't helping either. Overall though, Sunset Overdrive is a game that is a blast to play from a gameplay perspective, and I definitely still recommend it, but be prepared for some cringy dialogue. If that doesn't matter to you, then you'll probably love this game. I for sure wanted to absolutely love Sunset Overdrive, but didn't, and it taught me that lesson that we all need to learn at some point, which was not to get too hyped for a game ever again. On top of that, I was trying to scratch this itch that a certain game had given me way back in the year 2000, and I found that Sunset Overdrive didn't really do it for me. What game is that, you ask? Well, I'll see you next time.